So it's been a little over a year since I first bought the Canon C70 and it's been an absolute workhorse for me and I've been able to bring it on so many different types of projects. But as some of you may know, I did sell it off a month or so ago and today I wanna to share with you guys the entire process that brought me to this decision and I wanna share with you guys my new camera system that I switched to. So if you guys want to know more context on why I bought the Canon C70, I'll leave a link down below to a very long video going through the entire context of why I ended up with the Canon C70. But essentially selling off the C70 was my personal preference and there's some nuance with my own workflow and style. So please don't sell off your C70 because I did. The C70 is still an incredible camera. It packs a punch and I think it's the best camera for solo operators, especially at that price point. But essentially when I bought the C70, I wanted a dedicated workhorse cinema camera and that's exactly what it was. The C70 lived alongside my Sony FX3 and it really became the camera that I relied on and trusted for all of my major projects. And right after I bought the C70, I started getting really busy. 2023 was an absolute whirlwind and my entire plan when I bought the C70 was to get into like the small to mid-tier commercial space. And that's exactly what happened. I brought it on so many different types of projects from weddings to events to small to mid-tier commercial stuff to the biggest project I ever shot for Garmin and just a bunch of random really fun projects in between all that. It was definitely the perfect camera that I needed for that certain point in my career. Sure, I could have gotten by with the FX6. The Komodo OG was for sure not the best move because I needed versatility with different jobs, rigging setups, and I just need that ease of use that the C70 offers. But over this year, I felt like I grew a ton with my image making and just being a DP, and I felt like my preferences were changing as well. I wasn't really expecting to get all this commercial work up front in 2023. I was expecting it to be kind of like near the later half of 2023, moving into 2024. But this year really showed true exactly what I want to do, exactly the path I want to go down. I want to chase being a commercial DP. I don't mind being a solo operator. I don't mind working with smaller to mid-sized teams. I just want to make great images, be outdoors, be on set, and I just want to work with cameras and I just want to be like a serious DP, but be nimble like I love doing. I definitely want to pursue more of that higher end tier of client where I'm working with big name clients, but we're working with smaller to mid-tier teams. The budgets are pretty solid, but they're being delivered to social, web, and who knows where else. And there's still a piece of me that wants to pursue the documentary style commercial gigs. That's pretty much the main reason why I bought the C70. But because my perspective has changed as a DP, when it comes to thinking about a documentary camera kit, I definitely have a new perspective on what camera kit I would need to shoot those type of documentary projects. And after about six to eight months of working at the Canon C70, I kind of hit my breaking point and I was like, dude, I need something different. I need to change a pace. And I started researching new cameras. And while I absolutely adore the Canon C70, I'm one of the biggest advocates for it just because it's so versatile and it can mesh in with a lot of different projects. There are some compromises that come up because of how versatile it is. The main obstacles that I came across were the rigging, workflow, and surprisingly, the image quality. The C70 takes on a hybrid mirrorless cinema camera kind of body style with the flip out screen, and this makes it really versatile for stripped down rigs, and that's exactly where the C70 shines. Like all the stuff I shot with the field trips and the stuff with Sam Elkins, that was completely stripped down, and it was perfect because we didn't need all these other extra camera supports because the C70 bare bones got the job done, and that's how we ran it because it was easy. And thankfully, the C70 is so versatile because it could live in all these different types of rigs, and that was perfect because I brought on a lot of different types of jobs this year. But as the year progressed, I started doing less and less run and gun stuff with my C70 and I found myself more on set, video focused stuff where I need the best image quality. And because of that, my C70 was rigged up pretty much 90% of the time as 2023 progressed. And while this is great as a versatile camera that can take on different types of productions, when it's primarily being rigged up, it gets extremely clunky with having a V-mount plate, HDMI sticking out the side, all these extra cables, and just the entire workflow with it just didn't really feel as streamlined and minimal as I was looking for. And of course there's compromises and for the price of the C70 you can get by with these things but as I was getting more and more of these bigger jobs I just knew that I needed to swap things up and I just wanted a cleaner setup that didn't have all these things to worry about. I've always been a fan of the old red DSMC2 cameras and maybe even the DSMC1s I didn't really pay attention to those but essentially those cameras it's pretty much a cable a setup where they have a V-lock plate off the back so your battery is attached to the brain. You have your lens, media, and the media was expensive back then but the main thing is that the external monitor monitor connected to the brain of the camera so there was no power cable, SDI or HDMI or camera control cable. It was all embedded into the electronic pins on camera and I've always dreamt of having a setup like that where there's as minimal cables as possible 
it's streamlined and it just looks really clean and it makes just operating the camera a nice experience as well. And the workflow of the C70 is interesting because it really feels like a souped up FX3. It's small enough to be like pretty compact, but it's not as small as the FX3, but then it's bigger, but it's not quite as big as other cinema cameras. And the C70 is definitely a powerful running gun camera and especially having the internal RAW and DGO sensor, it creates a beautiful image. But I started to realize that the C70 and FX3 overlapped a lot to where it kind of didn't really make sense to have the C70 anymore. Because it sits between these two different categories, I felt like as a DP and someone who's pursuing the more professional route, I feel like I needed a tier above the C70 where it's a proper dedicated cinema camera with exactly what I need versus a hybrid of the two that doesn't really do both setups extremely well. And that really speaks volumes to the FX3 because it's such a versatile and powerful camera that's smaller and cheaper and it has better autofocus, IBIS, dual base ISO. And the experience of working with the FX3 is just so crazy because it's so powerful in this tiny little setup, it feels like you're cheating. And there's definitely a reason why I bought the C70 because the image quality and experience is definitely better than the FX3 for client work. But my preferences changed and I felt like I needed something different on that end. And I pretty much kept the C70 around for a while because I was playing on doing more documentary style stuff. But I realized that if I'm doing more running gun stuff where I need a small kit and a small footprint and something that's just really versatile, I should really let the FX3 shine through and give it more responsibilities and learn to trust it some more. I was yearning to use my FX3 more just because it's such a fun camera to use and it really makes the running gun documentary style stuff extremely easy, especially because of that low light and IBIS. I'm for sure gonna be making a video comparing these two because I get a lot of questions about it. So stay tuned for that. But alongside that, I was definitely getting tired of the soft softness of the C70. For docu-style stuff or narrative, the softness is nice because it just kind of creates this filmic look. And I enjoy the image out of the C70, but I'm doing a lot more product stuff where I'm shooting screens and watches and phones and devices. And ultimately I was just getting tired of delivering a soft image. And I just wanted more detail, sharpness, and ultimately more resolution. I want a more resolution to future proof because 4K doesn't really seem like enough for me right now. And I feel like moving to 6K would be a nice move because you get more resolution for cropping and stable which makes both of those extremely easy. But then also downscaling is really nice and having a 6K sensor is just gonna be sharper. And of course there's more pixels. And what was weird is that near the end of 2023, I started getting requests for 6K delivery, which of course the C70 can't do. And that would require us to rent a camera that shoots 6K like the Komodo or Blackmagic Pocket 6K or so 12K pretty much those types of cameras out there. And ultimately we didn't end up going down that track. We ended up just sticking with my C70, but that really brought to my attention that, okay, this might be a trend moving forward that I get more requests of delivering 6K. So it might be a good thing to pick up a camera that has a 6K sensor at the bare minimum. But ultimately as the year went on, I felt like the C70 wasn't doing what I needed it to do. I was changing as a DP, my jobs were changing. And I saw that trend of doing more small, to mid-tier high-end commercial work where I could definitely get by with having a slower workflow if that means I get better image quality and a better experience on set. So pretty much what I'm saying is that I don't need a versatile running gun camera for these types of jobs. I want a proper cinema camera. And at the end of the day, I was getting really bored of the C70. I wasn't having fun picking it up and going shooting with it. I was using my FX3 more in my personal life because I have more fun with that camera and that camera makes me want to shoot. So with all those reasons, it led me to picking up my new camera, the Red Komodo X. This thing is an absolute powerhouse and it gives me everything I've been wanting and yearning for in this small and compact package. This thing is a little bit bigger than my FX3 and so much smaller than my C70. And it's just insane how much power is actually packed into this at this crazy tiny footprint. So you might be wondering how I ended up with the Red Komodo X. I researched high and low with so many different camera systems from different brands, different camera types. And when I first bought the C70, I was really banking on Canon releasing an RF C300 or RF C500. I wanted a larger cinema camera with a 6K sensor and a new RF mount, but Canon showed no signs of upgrading. They gave us an upgrade to the C70, thankfully, to give internal RAW, but they were doing a heavy push on the R5C and it's been three years since they released the Canon C70 and that's really the only cinema camera that they have. Of course, you make the argument for the R5C, but it's just a hybrid R5 with a fan, essentially. So I knew Canon was out of it and I looked at Blackmagic and Sony and Panasonic and nothing really caught my eye until Red released the Red Komodo X. And you might know from that other video that I posted about why I bought the C70, the Red Komodo OG was also on my plate to pick up because it was the same price as the FX6 and C70 but the Komodo OG just didn't really feel like the proper A camera that I needed. But I think Red released this camera back in June-ish or May. It's definitely been out for a little while now, but 
When I saw that, I did all the research and I realized that this camera definitely feels more like a supercharged C70, which means that it feels more like a proper A camera, but it still has that cinema camera functions that I'm looking for. And back in the fall of 2023, I was able to rent the Red Komodo X once and the Red Komodo OG twice. And with those three experiences alone, I knew for a fact that I need to save up by the Komodo X because for a lot of different reasons. I'm gonna be making a video about why I bought the X over the OG, so stay tuned for that as well. And near the end of 2023, I was kind of expecting to sell off the C70 in January or February. I wasn't really expecting to make a push this soon, but what pushed this entire process up a lot quicker was that Red ran an insane discount during the month of December. They had discounts on their accessories, but more importantly, they had discounts on their packages. So they had the starter kit and production kit, and they ran 15% off on both of those. And when you pair that up with the Paybu card from B&H, you can save quite a bit of money. So I ended up with the Red Komodo X production kit with the gold mount IO, and I ended up saving about $3,000 all set and done, which was really convenient and a really solid time because there's a lot of accessories that I wanted to pick up and saving that money just allows me to get those accessories. So the production kit comes with a red top handle, DSMC3 monitor, two terabytes of media and card reader, XLR module and gold map module, both of which I'm selling because I don't need those and I have different plans for my IO kits. And alongside that, I also picked up the red wing grip, mid 49 side plate, screen protector for my monitor, as well as the monitor hood from red. And I also have an assortment of V-mount batteries that I've collected from over the years. And I can't say that buying a red has always been a dream of mine because I never thought it would actually happen. So I never really spent time dreaming about it. Even with the C70 and the FX3, I just feel so spoiled working with these cameras because back when I started, I was shooting on a GoPro and I just never thought that I could have a camera like this for under $20,000. Even the C70 and FX3, having those for about 6K each, it's just insane. And we're definitely blessed to be creators in this time because all these things are relatively affordable. And at first I plan on keeping the FX3, C70 and the Komodo and that's kind of like my perfect world scenario. But as time went on, I started to realize the C70 just is kind of like the oddball in this entire camera kit. It doesn't really make sense to keep the C70 because the FX3 is so versatile and small and it does a lot of those things really well whereas the C70 doesn't. But then when it comes to client work and stuff, the Komodo X edges it out in so many different ways from the workflow to the image quality to the codex and also just the red name. So it's kind of redundant to have the C70 when I have both of these cameras. And also financially, I could get about eight to 10K for my entire C70 kit, which can almost pay off my Komodo X. So yeah, in a perfect world, I think it would have been nice to have all three, but I'm indecisive. So it's kind of nice having two very separate cameras. So whenever I get a job, it's clear what camera I need to pick for that certain job. So yeah, I plan on doing a lot with this camera. This is gonna be my main client facing camera, but then there are those jobs where if I need a smaller setup, run and gun, autofocus, IBIS, whatever, I have my Sony FX3 for that. But now I have two different setups. I know exactly what camera to choose depending on the job, but I am so excited to bring this Komodo X out on set. It's going to be so wonderful to work with and it has been wonderful to work with. It's exactly what I've been wanting moving from the C70. It just feels more refined, more of a professional DP's tool and it's exactly where I wanted to be at this point in my career. So yeah, stay tuned for more videos about the Komodo X. I have some videos planned on how I set it up, the rigging, the accessories, pretty much everything that is involved around the Komodo X. So yeah, this is my new client facing cinema camera. I plan on rocking this for a long time. I have no plans to upgrade anytime soon unless some crazy career things happen and I need a Raptor or Burano, but hopefully that doesn't happen for a while because it's a lot of money. <laughs> but yeah, at the end of the day, these cameras are tools and you need to pick the right tool for the job. And that's why I have the Komodo X and the Sony FX3. If you guys have any questions about the Komodo X or FX3 or C70, feel free to leave them down below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.